This entire build goes beyond what people think is even the best strand build at the moment, even cementing itself as one of the best ad clears in the game, as well as dishing out far more damage than you would think possible. This build creates a miniature army for you to mow down hordes of enemies with, gives you a mind-blowing 80% damage resist for nearly the whole time an enemy is nearby, and everything in this build synergizes together for one glorious work of art. Move over, suspend Warlock, because these Threadlings are taking over. This build has so much synergy, I don't even know where to start. This build has so many components that work so well together, but they're all based around Threadling, so let's just start with the name itself in the grenade. Yes, we are using the Threadling grenade, a grenade I'm convinced people already forgot existed. This nade is pretty simple as it just splits into three Threadlings that seek out enemies, and if they can't find anything, they will perch onto you. Meaning the next time you find an enemy, these things will hunt them down for you and do an insane amount of damage. Perch Threadlings are also a very important part of the build, and I'll show you why later in the video. This grenade pairs extremely well with our first aspect, Mindspun Invocation, which just buffs all of our grenade on strand, but specifically lets us consume our Threadling grenade, turning it from spawning three Threadlings into making it five perched ones, meaning you have five little minions that will go out and deal the extra damage you need to any target you shoot. This leads us into our next aspect, which is Weaver's Call, and this aspect makes it so whenever you cast a rift, three Threadlings will spawn at the same time as the rift. That's not all though, because the next part synergizes perfectly with our previous aspect. Casting the Rift also sends out all of our perched Threadlings in a swarm in front of you to deal a very nice chunk of damage, which means it creates a nice combo of Consume Grenade and Pop Rift to send out 8 Threadlings towards whatever target you want. These two aspects together make the build fun already, but we still have 4 Fragments to go. These Fragments contribute so well to the build that I wouldn't even dare to replace any of these for any content in the game. They play so well whether you are just running a normal strike or doing Lake of Shadows on Grandmaster. First up to bat, we have Threat of Evolutions, making our Threadlings just that much better, giving them extra damage and making them travel further. This damage increase is pretty significant as it adds an additional 25% damage to the Threadling, making it a very welcome fragment to the team. Next up, we have Threat of Rebirth, so that our strand weapons have a chance to generate Threadlings on kill, which happens way more often than you would think. This also does stack with our Hatchling trade on strand weapons, making it so you have a very good chance of spawning two Threadlings with one kill if you're using Hatchling. This build also gets way better, adding Threat of Generation, which gives grenade energy whenever you deal damage. This includes damage from our Threadlings. I'm sure you can see all the synergy coming together, but we aren't done just yet. That being said, our last fragment is Threat of Warding, which grants us an insane 70% damage resist when grabbing an Orb of Power. You'll be able to see the insane impact this fragment has on the build when we get to the mod section of the video, and you'll be able to see how often we can keep this buff up. Moving over to the gear section of the video, the exotic armor of choice is of course Swarmers. These boots make it so whenever you hit a target with a Threadling, they unravel, meaning that when they die, they will spawn in a Tangle. Then, when you destroy a Tangle with these boots equipped, a Threadling will spawn. Now these aren't the only interaction we have with Tangles in the build, but I'll cover the rest of that in the Artifacts section. These boots are perfect exotic to pair with our build, as well as the perk Hatchling. Hatchling is a weapon trait that will also spawn in Threadlings when you get a precision kill or a multi-kill. This perk is only found on 9 weapons in the game, with a 10th coming on a scout rifle during Guardian games. Of course, use whatever weapons you would like with the build, but my personal favorite combo is Rufus's Fury from the raid. Null Composure and Leviathan's Breath. Null Composure is strictly here for some extra damage, but I will be replacing it with the Void Raid Slug once I get it crafted. And Leviathan's Breath just got some insane buffs over the last few seasons and is now a monster for boss damage. I would recommend this loadout strictly because it covers all bases, having a weapon interact with the build and two weapons to take down those targets that are a little more tanky. Now I'm going to take a second here to ask you all to please subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video. I'm trying to put a little more effort in the builds if you guys can notice, and I would appreciate a sub and a like, and yeah, let's get right back into it. Moving over to the mods now, we are using the typical orb generation mods. These include Harmonic Siphon for Strand Multi-Kills, Void Siphon for Void Multi-Kills, Firepower for Grenade Kills, and Reaper for getting a kill after placing a rift. These mods will all spawn in orbs if you meet the requirements they have. Grabbing these orbs gives armor charges, and we can amplify this effect by adding on these two mods. Stacks on stacks, which makes it so when you grab an orb of power we get two armor charges instead of one, and charged up so that we can stack up to four armor charges in total. These four armor charges will be strictly used with our two grenade kickstarts, so that when you throw a grenade you will get roughly 45% of your grenade back. Keep in mind this does work when you consume a grenade. The next set of mods we have all contribute to ability uptime. These being two copies of Innervation, meaning whenever you grab an Orb of Power, you will be granted 13% of your grenade energy back with every single orb. Then we have two copies of Bomber, which 
to grant an additional 25% of grenade energy whenever you place your rift. Our final mob mod will be Heavy Ammo Finder, just to keep our Leviathan's Breath stocked up on arrows for DPS time. Lastly, mix in whatever stat mods you would like to top off your build. Keep in mind the three stats you want to prioritize in this build come in this order. Resilience, Discipline, and Recovery. Moving over to the artifact, I do have to mention these artifact mods don't make the build specifically, but they do improve its quality. I have no idea what the build will look like going into next season, but it should still perform well if you have the subclass and fragments the exact same. That being said, this is what our artifact looks like with the key ones being untangler so that when we destroy tangles, all surrounding enemies will be suspended in the air for a handful of seconds, rendering them useless. Allied unraveling so that when we get a multi-kill with our strand weapons, you will get a unraveling rounds on your gun and threadling blasts so that when you blow up a tangle, the explosion will be bigger and deal more damage. Bricks on Bricks is here so you can finish off elites with null composure and get leviathan breath ammo and volatile flow is here as it is the only way to stun anti-barrier champions with this build. Remember whenever a weapon has volatile rounds it can stun an anti-barrier champion so null composure will be able to do this for 10 seconds after orb pickup. All I really have left to talk about is how this build works so let's get into it. So this next part is going to be at Shurichi, I know it's not the best place to show off builds but I just want to show cooldowns and general rotations you want to use to use the build to the best of its ability. So the first thing you want to do is pop your grenade. Eating your grenade will give you five threadlings, as you can see on the left, and surrounding you. They will be circling you when they're perched. And whenever you shoot an enemy, they will track down that enemy and kill them. Whenever you get a kill with a threadling, it'll spawn these green darts in the sky that'll track down enemies as well, severing them, or unraveling them. They will be unraveled enemies, not severed. And unraveled enemies, whenever you kill them, they will spawn more of those, so you can just spawn armies upon armies of these green dots that will just go and hunt down a bunch of enemies, as many as possible, and kill them. It, it's a very good build for ad player, because you also have abilities such as your melee, which will do that unravel effect, or just straight up kill enemies. So if I throw it at a knight, you can see him, now he's unraveled. So whenever he dies, he'll spawn a bunch of those green dots, darts that will track down these enemies, and then I'll place my rift, summon hatchlings, and it's just wave after wave of just several tracking units that will just deal insane amounts of damage towards enemies. So as you can see, I'll just keep spamming my abilities and you will get your grenade back so fast, especially since I have demo on my weapon, that you can just keep on proccing it over and over and over again. It's a very good build for Adclear, I recommend you guys try it out and let me know what you think. So this last bit of the video is going to be unscripted. It's going to be a confusing topic, so if I start rambling and getting even more confusing, just ask something down in the comments. I'll be active down there and I'll respond to as many people as I can with the best of my ability. But Threadlings have weird interaction with orbs because they will do the damage of the thing that spawns them. Meaning, when you throw a Threadling grenade at the floor and it splits into three, it will do grenade damage. That part makes sense. That's normal. But if you spawn a Threadling with Hatchling, the weapon trait on Rufus's, that Hatchling will now count as weapon damage. So if you get one kill with Rufus and then that Hatchling gets a kill, it will now be a multi-kill and it can proc Harmonic Siphon. It's very important for Orb Gen. You can't really control this because we have another fragment on called Thread of Rebirth that gives you a chance at spawning a Threadling with uh, Strand Weapons, which that is kind of weird because that threadling that spawns from Thread of Rebirth will not count as weapon damage, so you can't get a multi-kill from that. It has to be from the Hatchling one. It's very weird because I don't know what damage that threadling is even doing. I think it might just be its own unique type. Same goes for the Rift. The Rift will not proc any mods as well. And also, if you consume your grenade and have the five perched ones, those also do not have their own damage type. They just don't spawn orbs. I don't know what damage type they're doing, but it's not helpful to the build. So the only ways to spawn orbs is from hatchling. The other methods to spawn threadlings, other than just outright throwing a grenade, which you shouldn't be doing a lot of the time, are just kind of bad. Not too sure why, but just keep that in mind. It will halt your orb gen, so you might want to throw a nade every once in a while. That being said, though, firepower, which is a mod we have on this build, and I left on this build at the moment because it will be getting fixed, is currently bugged. It says in the bottom left it generates orbs. I have a video on it, but it clearly doesn't. I'll post the video on the top right if you want to see like what I'm talking about, but firepower just isn't generating orbs like it says it is, which is kind of unfortunate because it does affect this build a good amount because you do want to throw your little grenade every once in a while to get some orbs. But 
Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is champions. This build excels significantly at dealing with unstoppable and overload champions, strictly because Leviathan's Breath has intrinsic unstoppable rounds, so you can stun unstoppables really easily. And then our Rufus's has overload rounds, so you can stun overloads and basically insta-kill them with this build. Anti-barriers are a little bit of a threat. That's why we have Volatile on it. That's why I said that earlier. Volatile will help you a lot in keeping... Uh, anti-barriers in check but when you don't have that the only other way to do that to kill an anti-barriers is to have a tangle next to them and then shoot it and suspend them that is a really un like reliable strat so i wouldn't rely on that i'd have a teammate with anti-barrier rounds to help you out more that's about it for the video i yeah i put a lot of effort in this video a lot more than i normally do so i'd appreciate a sub and a like if you guys enjoyed it I'm trying to get to 1,000 subs, and if you guys want to help me on that journey, please subscribe. And yeah, I hope you guys all have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time.